but we thought it would be a great idea. Um, we noticed in our young adult gatherings in general, we like to eat lots of chips, <laughs> lots of Oreos. Um, and as we were heading into Lent and then even thinking about uh, people might have some good ideas in the beginning of Lent, but tend to run out of ideas towards the end. And then we're going to be looking at the summertime. That would be a really great opportunity um, to get a couple of guys in here who have expertise in fitness, in nutrition, and talk about these things, right? Because I think we could all eat better um, because we think of ourselves as the icons of Christ, right? The icons of God. Uh, and, and our bodies are a temple, and we want to try to do our best. So, Melchizedek, Joshua, uh, you see their bios were on the um, on the flyer, but they're both, you know, highly, highly um, educated in this area, uh, licensed in some ways as well. So please, if you don't mind giving them your attention, we appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's a perfect intro. Uh, before I wanted to, to begin, I wanted to talk a little bit more about my background and how I got into all of this and where I intend to go with it in the future. Uh, so I'm Melchizedek. Um, I started weightlifting when I was 18 years old and I was in college. Essentially out of boredom, I, I realized that it was better than doing nothing than just like sitting in my dorm and staring at my screen. So I just decided to, to go to the gym. Um, and then after a while, like most young men, you know, that becomes your outlet for access rage, like access anything. So then it became a lifestyle, and then from there it devolved into research, into more research, which ended up encompassing nutrition, uh, bits and pieces of endocrinology, and things of that like to maximize my results in fitness and in sports in general. Uh, and then once I graduated college, just like every other guy, I was like, shoot, I have this piece of paper, I don't know what to do. So I then proceeded to get more pieces of paper. I, uh, I got my NASM on uh, uh, nutrition and my personal training cert at the same time it was one of those deals where it's like if you save money now and I'm like heck yeah I want to save some money mm -hmm. so I did both of those passed both both tests and then eventually became a, a personal trainer uh, and that's where I am now and in th and in the future just because it does get a little monotonous doing a bunch of research on weightlifting and I'm in mean, the like I'm now getting more into um, understanding how nutrition impacts cells and cellular and cellular energy and stuff. And it's I'm still extremely new to it, but it's it's a lot of fun. So hopefully I can grow in that field and use that to also expand my training and make sure that my clients are as as healthy as as can be. I do want to expand a little bit on uh, what Jeremy said, like regarding the why, like why this matters, because I mean the how. The how is already outlined, but uh, but the why is just a little bit more um, more important. Like as Jeremy said, you know, our bodies are a temple for God. But I would also even go further and say what you do and what you put into your bodies inevitably affects your paradigm, which then affects your actions. And then once you look at it from that, the implications are endless. Because at the end of the day, we're going to be judged for quite a bit, but I would say that our actions are going to be the biggest one. So your mindset, your body, all of which affects your actions, and that's essentially almost eternity. Um, so going from there, as you can see from the sheets that were handed out, I did write down some basic uh, tips. Now my goal here is just to give you guys not a diet, not something that confines you like what you can and can't do. These are just general recommendations and things that I do when in doubt. Um, so, and this was also intended to be applicable for not just Lent, but also post Lent. So once we've survived Lent, you know, and Pascha finally happens, these these principles will still apply. So starting with starting with the very first one, keep it natural. This is huge. This this eliminates practically a a majority of what causes people to have health issues in in the first place. For like in essence, you know, you won't find Oreos in nature. Like Oreo Oreos don't no nope. <laughs> <laughs> Oreo trees. No, uh, you won't find potato chips in nature. The only counter argument I could see to this, um, you know, like, the only exactly, which is where I was going, right? So, so potatoes, like you can definitely find in nature, and I promote having potatoes. I just don't promote having them cooked in a bunch of stuff that did not come from nature, right? Like, like you're not gonna find seed oils those in nature, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, like you're not going to find um, what whatever they're cooked in. Uh, you you. 
Like, you may find the seed itself, but not the oil. And even then, the oil itself is mixed in with a bunch of stuff, so just avoid it. If you, you should primarily be buying and making whole foods. That is, which also leads me perfectly into, you know, two, make your own food. You can, if, if you learn how to cook and how to cook with whole ingredients, you control everything that goes in your body, which is massive. When you're eating out, you really don't know what's going in your food. Like, I mean, that may sound jaded, but it's, it's true. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what those cooks put in my eggs. I don't know. Maybe I got mad at the waitress or something and then she spat my food. I don't know. But I also <laughs> say right after that, don't go insane with this. <laughs> So, uh, so if you're out and you know you're out with friends or you or you're out with, out with family, when in Rome, do what Romans do. I I wouldn't trip too much if it's like, oh, is everybody having pizza? Yeah, like a slice won't kill you. Um, if you are a little like obsessive over it, and um, I mean that's fine. Or you are at that point where, yeah, a slice of pizza may mess up what you had had planned. The best thing you can do is supplement with vitamin E. Um, so vitamin E has antioxidizing effects on your cells. So when, when, uh, when you hear me ranting about, you know, I like, don't have any processed foods or don't have seed oils, your body doesn't know what to do with that. Cause it's like, whoa, this isn't natural. I haven't had this, or I'm not supposed to have this. Um, so when you have, um, like vitamin E, it has the antioxidizing effects. So your cells don't open up and get, you know, assaulted by the free radicals or, or the toxins in your body. So absolutely massive. Just supplementing with vitamin E after any meal you had out, perfectly fine, you'll be fine. And uh, thirdly, you always feel light. This is another big one. Food is energy. If you eat something and you feel sluggish, you need to figure out why. You either had too much of something, which is not good, or you had the wrong thing, which is even worse. So um, when when you eat, yeah, definitely eat until you're satiated, and then after that, drink water. For some reason, it seems to, it seems to be this common trend that people will uh, mistake hunger with thirst, when like when they really just need some water, but they're just eating, eating, eating. Like, why don't I feel full? Full? I'm like, dude, you're satiated. You just need to drink more water and fill up your stomach. Um, so, eat well, drink water, and the litmus test for whether or not this was done. Uh, um, this was done right is after you've eaten can you exercise you should always be able to eat drop down and give me 20 as if nothing happened if you if you do that and then you feel like really sluggish and like oh you messed up reevaluate either either adjust your portions or figure out what you ate and then go from there uh, which also segues into four take care of your stomach so choosing foods that are easy to digest that's a personal thing like everybody's body is different when it comes to what they can and, and what they cannot handle uh, for instance I could have starch is fine I could have white rice all day and, and my stomach is fine but like some people can't do that so this is where experimenting comes in and literally trusting and literally trusting your gut is a, is absolutely paramount um, you know like before Lent uh, like, like one of my staples is is potatoes and butter I can I can tolerate that. Like I can I can eat that and look in the mirror, no bloat, no nothing, perfectly fine. But if I have say too much brown rice, my stomach just boop, my body uh, my body is not able to um, to process that for whatever reason. Um, and another favorite in this regard would be sauerkraut. Um, whenever I have something that's going to be particularly heavy, I'll just throw some sauerkraut on it. Uh, before Lent, for instance, you know in um, very typical bodybuilding fashion. I'll have beef and rice, okay, but I'll just put some sauerkraut on top. Make sure that uh, make sure that my stomach is good, and then so far I've had I've had no problems <clears throat> with eating anything heavy. Okay, so can you talk about mm -hmm. why is sauerkraut? Why? What's it doing? What's it's fermented. Uh, fermented foods are yeah, yeah exactly. So mm -hmm. uh, fermented foods are extremely good for your gut um, gut health and your gut. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce the word. I've only read it. Microbiomes? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so, um, so when you have stuff that's fermented, your gut goes, this is my support system. So instead of, you know, like taxing your stomach, 
it's, it sees it as like more support to get the um, gases and everything flowing. It's actually good bacteria. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like it's good bacteria. It digests food for you. Yes. Yeah, right. Like my son comes to me and I want some candy or sugar or cake. It's like, oh, it's time to eat sauerkraut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yes, I'm using that one. Thank you. <laughs> I'm stealing it. Um, so that's so that's in essence why I, I mainly use uh, sauerkraut. If I feel like I'm really gonna have something heavy, another one I have is kimchi. So I'll just toss them both. One bowl, stomach is perfectly fine. And uh, and number five, this one could be a little um, odd at first, but but the mirror is your friend when it comes to your health. Uh, I analyze myself every morning. I wake up, I look in the mirror, like not in like a vain way, like ooh, no. I look at my face, mostly. I'm like, okay, how's, um, uh, how's my skin look? How, how do my eyes look? How do my cheeks look? Because that tells me, like, the eye area. Did I sleep enough? Or was my sleep deep enough? Um, in essence, um, if I wake up and I see more bags uh, uh, than usual, I'm like, all right, you know, reassess, what did I do, and then go from there. And for men, um, especially, this this area right here, this um, this tells me and should tell you how stressed you are. If you can't lose fat in, in this area, like even like I have some, your stress is like way too high. That's that's not average fat. That's um that's like stress or cortisol fat. So the only way to get rid of that over time is to chill out. And over time, you'll just kind of see this this one area of stubborn fat will just go away. Yes. Can we have a seminar later? Can somebody give a seminar on chilling out? Because I don't know. <laughs> 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 and uh, and the last one I have listed is uh, or cheeks. So um, another odd one, but uh, uh, like um, but your cheeks can it tells you a bunch. If your cheeks are watery, yeah, you probably had a little bit too much sodium, or you didn't drink enough water the night before. Um, and for men as well. It, it also could be a sign that your estrogen is a bit high and you know for dudes like you like, want to fix that um, so though, though that that's mainly that's mainly what I use my eyes my cheeks in this fat area right here uh, but the lifts it, it it can go on and on because everybody's different but the point is this there are some days vain or not where uh, where you look in the mirror and you go oh I look good today figure out why because your body is telling you something if you, if you wake up, you look in the mirror and go, wow, like, I actually look good today. You did something different the day before. You either went to bed earlier or you got better sleep or you ate something different. Or even as something as small as you were happier that day. Massive impact on health. So pay attention to how, how you look, but obviously, you know, don't go insane with it. Like, you know, just being like shredded for no reason. Um, and one of the most, um, and then a number six, I just kind of tossed out there. When, when I was asked to, to do this, I was, and the uh, topic was general fitness, I'm like, okay, like, what do you mean by that? Like, fit for what? What is fitness? Mm -hmm. And this, this then goes into the segue of what do you want out of your activities? Like, for instance, right, I, I'm, uh, most, of, most of my clientele, you know, like, like they're older, and then when I mean older, I mean like 70 plus, mm -hmm. and they just want to be strong enough to live. So that's a very particular thing. So we do things or do exercises that uh, impact the muscles that are most efficient for daily living. And that's, that's what they want to do. You know, I also train some bodybuilders on the side who are like, dude, I just want to get jacked and stacked. I'm like, all right. But that's their particular goal. So, so fitness for that guy is, you know, like jacked and tan. Fitness for my 70-year-old lady is I want to get, get out of bed. So you have to choose an activity that you want to do with your body or a goal for your body and then work for that. So fitness is fit for that particular task. Uh, general fitness, that's, you know, that's, um, that just, I interpret that as you can operate through life, but we're all operating through life. So then it becomes a trickier uh, thing there. And number eight, I have get sun, huge. There, I think the research I did uh, showed that some of the most, some of the, um, some of the vitamins that most people are deficient in are A, D, and K. Um, now, the other ones, except 
prefer like vitamin D, those are all, that's a diet thing. Uh, like vitamin D, I mean like, yeah, I mean, I mean like, like you can get some from milk, uh, but the sun is the best and most accessible source. Uh, and from there, being in the sun boosts immunity, it boasts, uh, boosts your metabolic rate, um, which then leads to, you know, like, um, just being leaner and feeling more energetic in general. And then from there, increases your mood and it gets you better rest. So vitamin D deficiency is rampant simply because we don't go outside much anymore. Um, I'm almost at that point where I, I will trade gym time for sun time. I'll skip going to the... Uh, I, like, I'll skip going to the gym like, just to go lounge. That like that's how serious it is nowadays. Um, so uh, uh, so going on from the eight things that I discussed, we now have like my favorite foods and why. Uh, number one is raw honey, hands down, probably the most impactful and the best thing I ha I, have, I have ever had. I put honey on everything. I wake up honey, bed honey, lunch honey. I'm I am about the honey, man. Like, be, like, like bees hate bees hate me. Like bees will see see me and panic. That's how serious it is. But uh, like, well, like, but the reason why is um, our cells do run on on sugar, but you needn't be having a bunch of you know white, like white random t table sugar or synthetic stuff. Honey will get it done. Uh, with that amazing energy um it boosts your um uh, like so it increases your nitric uh your nitric oxide so so uh, so your blood vessels expand mm -hmm. and, w and with that like more nutrients goes to where it needs to be in essence um also loaded uh with minerals and for men it will increase your t testosterone if if you take it enough uh and second oh yeah of course when it comes to things like honey um, and and almond um, sugars, that I'm still a fan of knowing what your hormones are doing and your and what your calorie count is. So I don't know your husband. Like I don't know what his um, I, I don't know what his estrogen looks like. I don't know what his thyroid looks like. But uh, from there, if you know, if your concern is, oh, can he have or like, can he eat um, any sugar? I don't see a problem with sugar. I I noticed that increasing my sugar resulted in feeling better in general. Like I got warmer, I was happier, I was in a much better mood. But I stayed lean. But that's also because I keep track of my own thyroid. I I look at my own estrogen. I look at um, my own uh, my own face, like my biomarkers. I do that. So. Personally, I don't see a problem with anybody having honey, but, but once again, I would need more information to, to say yes, you can, or maybe you should hold off on that. And, and go over uh, hmm? access to raw honey versus processed honey, where do you get it? So, I, I am a, um, so there's multiple places to get it. I even think, think we sell it here. Like, there's some raw honey here. Yeah. <laughs> can I, can I chime in on this? Straight from the monastery. Hmm? What's that? Straight from the monastery. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you're consuming honey and moderate amounts, I definitely recommend supporting a monastery. Um, if you want honey in ridiculous amounts, I have a, uh, probably the most local beekeeper, Mel Jess Bees, they're in Murrieta, and I get a gallon from them, so I'm letting you know too, for 80 bucks, and this is orange blossom honey, Ooh. so uh, sorry I didn't put that on the, on the list, but yeah. It's, Can I call it to the honey? Mm. Yes. So Mel Jess, M E L J E S S Mel is the is the, um, the the beekeeper. They will receive a call from me very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say something just before we move on from honey? Yeah. When you say raw honey, I picture the stuff that's like it's uh, opaque. You can't see through it. Is that what you mean, or is this uh, diff is that so, different? So that it's the same thing, but that depends on how it's heated. So, like mm -hmm. so, the opaque stuff uh, that you can't see through that's that good stuff right there okay. but that's what I have I have that stuff to where it's like you can't even pour it like you have to like scoop it out yeah well um, what what that means sorry yeah. I hate to jump in on but yeah. what that means is it's a little bit aged yeah. so all honey will crystallize over time mm -hmm. so you can have some really good raw unfiltered honey that's that's gonna look pretty clear in the beginning and it depends like what variety it mm -hmm. is um, 
But yeah, that when it crystallizes, that just tells you how old it is. Right. Or if it's it, stirred, stirred a lot, I think mm. they can process it to make it a creamy by stirring it. Mm. I don't know. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Do, no do I they, mean, well, well, well. Question. That reason. Hmm? Yeah. Do, do they all melt during the summer, or is it only certain types that melt during the summer? They should all melt as long as they're left. I'm in the sun, but they may not become like the opaque, like syrupy thing, but, but they'll get a little bit warm. Um, but to add on to all this, so yeah, the, the honey that I get, it's, it's the one that's hardened, like it's crystallized. Uh, that way I, n I also know that it wasn't heated because the honey that I uh, like that you can pour out, even though it says raw honey, it was still heated. It just wasn't heated to, to the temperatures that, um, that would ruin the enzymes that I'm particularly, um, interested in or looking for. And um, moving on from that is uh, the second one is oysters, right? Bees hate me, oysters hate me, right? Mm -hmm. This is another staple, and this is even Lenten friendly. So, uh, so like you best believe, I was choosing violence when I saw any oysters <laughs> in the store, huh? Canned oysters or non -cans? Uh Either one. It depends on what kind of the um, like which brand of canned oysters, though. Yeah. So like I'll have like I'll I'll have um, I'll have the non-canned or the canned ones, it's around the it's around the same thing, but if I get the canned ones, it's only in water, no oils. Okay. So just straight oysters, water. It's always packed with sea oils. Yeah, like you gotta choose. Like I get the ones, it's um it's uh the geisha brand, but it literally says in water. So no seed oils there, just water. That's important though. Um so very high in zinc, which is another thing that most people are deficient in. Uh from there, you know, this one is not Lenten friendly, but um I'm a huge fan, fan of um, liver as well. I don't have it every day, but when I do have it, it's a full liver. So you don't want to have it every day because, you know, it is kind of like a question thing that's going on about like, oh, um, vitamin A can be too toxic if, um, if taken too much. And I've personally never had that problem, but I do have a friend who did have liver every day and then one day he was just down. Sure enough, he had a little bit too too much um, too much uh, liver the, the day before, and he got sick. So maybe there's some truth to it. Maybe there isn't. I'm 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 not sure, but I'm very moderate with how much liver I have. Uh, two percent milk. Now this is the one where uh, where people are like no full milk. So the reason why I put two percent is because it's easier to process and and assimilate into your system. Full fat milk. It's totally fine if you can tolerate it. So the thing is, if you can tolerate it, most people who will have full fat milk, they'll feel kind of like woozy or sluggish, which is what which is what you don't want. Like you want to feel light. And it's because the fat is a little bit too high, and their bodies are having some trouble breaking it down. Like fat takes a long time to fully break down, but it is essential. So choose choose your fats wisely. Uh, number five, dates. Once again, you know, <laughs> dates. They hate me because I have so many a day. I, I easily, I will have like maybe 18 to 20 a day. Super high in sugar, but that's but that's what I mean. Like sugar won't kill you. It's also like super high in fiber, right? Super high in fiber, yeah. So, yeah, like if you've got some bowel issues, I'm just saying. <laughs> but, uh, but but no, like I'm good that way though. So, um, so and, and, and it's also extremely loaded with, good sources of minerals like I one day I um, I had this app I use and I scanned dates and it gave me like a list like this and I didn't even read it and I was like this looks like a lot of good stuff I tossed it in my cart and just went away <laughs> so there's a lot of good stuff in dates um, number six the dates Alexander the Great Macedonian they ate only dates before the war did you mean Greek <laughs> yeah. And also don't waste the seeds from the dates. Mm. You dry them in the oven and you mash them in a blender, mm. blend them, and you make tea with it because it's it really great stuff for your body. That okay. I actually didn't know, so that's something I'll try. Um, yeah, so I mean I didn't know that, so so like I, I'm on I'm on something here. <laughs> so, like, so so I guess whenever it's time to retake the Holy Land. Dates. dates. <laughs> uh, um, so, um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, so six are eggs. Also, like not mentioned 
appropriate, but still very good. Um, so particularly eggs with the yolk running, there's a reason. So when I cook my eggs, and I miss my eggs very much, I, um, I either have them fried or sunny side up. And the reason is the egg whites, you should cook those because there are some anti-enzymes in there that when you cook, they're killed, and the protein that's in the egg is primarily from the egg whites. So that protein becomes more bioavailable, so you can actually have it. And, but the yolk is just a vitamin bomb. Hmm. Don't touch the yolk. Like, keep the yolk as runny as you possibly can, so you're not cooking out any of the good stuff. Um, that's why, you know, like, when, when I, I, get, I get slightly annoyed when in, when my eggs are sort of scrambled, I'm like, dude, like you just killed everything I'm trying to get. I'm like, that's a crime. Uh, <laughs> but so extremely important. And uh, and number seven, green tea. This is another one. You know, green tea companies hate me because <laughs> I'm like I keep stealing all their stuff. Um, so I have this more so than coffee because I noticed that the come down isn't as severe. Like with green tea, it's just like. I'll drink my green tea with some raw honey, and this is also a most important. If you do put honey or uh, uh, raw honey in your green tea, don't boil your tea because that kills the point of having raw honey because you just cooked it. Mm -hmm. So you want to have hmm? tea generally also green tea. Hmm? So the reason yeah. probably why you don't feel the come down as much as coffee is caffeine, yep. and caffeine. Yep. Hmm? And um, also, there's kind of a trade-off. So if you do want to get like the good stuff out of tea, hmm? you do have to steam it for a long time. Yes. Um, if you lightly steep it, you'll get sort of the flavor compounds out of it, mm -hmm. um, but you won't necessarily. Fortunately, there are like bitter compounds to be called like uh, alkaloids. Sort of alkaloids. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the t tannins or whatever. Also, or other sources of them. Um, right. There are other comp compounds too, but the more bitter tea is when you steep it, based on duration and temperature, you're also probably getting the good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's also probably why honey is going to help, but you could. Keep it for a long time about temperature, let it sit for a minute, and then put the, put the honey in. Well, that's exactly what I do. So uh, I'm glad you said that because now I don't have to explain it. So uh, so everything that he... Hmm? So also, if I can add, um, uh, honey in tea is uh, one of the ingredients that is actually super common uh, for Russian tea drinkers. Mm. Um, uh, specifically when sick, because not only does it have all those uh, good vitamins and good stuff in it, right. um, it helps uh, ease the throat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, like, you guys just said everything, so, uh, so I can essentially move on. But, um, so but to... <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, like, uh, but to add on to this, um, I was going to mention that um, at night, I'll notice that when I have, um, I'll have some honey, and I'm in my nighttime tea, my voice is deeper the following day and it's because it soothes your throat <coughs> so if you ever want some bass in, in your voice dudes just yeah. have some tea and some honey the night before you're going to be scaring people 